Hello boys and girls, this is Chad Man from the Chadtopia and we have a rather special thing for you today. I have a discussion with a Battlefield caster from America, otherwise known as Dasgro. Good evening, Dasgro. Good evening. Glad to be here. Yeah, now, the thing, we, the reason I dragged poor old Dasgro in here, sh kicking and screaming, is obviously because of his interest in Battlefield and esports in general, I uh, wanted to have a discussion with him about the Battle Recorder. Now, for those of you who are not aware of what that is, this was a recording system that enabled you to essentially record demos and then go back and do films and all that kind of stuff. Now, for those of you who have not seen any of the Gamescom uh, coverage, you will know that essentially uh, Battle Recorder is not being included in Battlefield 4. Now, obviously, that's a matter of concern as far as we are concerned. Now... Have you, Dasgro, have you had a lot of experience with battle recorders in previous Battlefield games? Uh, the most experience I've had when it comes to Battlefield battle recorder is in, bad, is in Battlefield 2. Battlefield 2 had sort of the definitive battle recorder experience where you could load up a demo of the game, a recording of the game that you just played, and then move that camera around and get any, every angle you uh, could possibly want to capture all the various moments in the game. And uh, having used that battle recorder quite often in Battlefield 2, uh, I, I certainly uh, hoped that in Battlefield 3 and in Battlefield 4 we would have seen it come back. Now, for those of you who are out there wondering why this is regarded as important, this um, we are we are looking at this uh, from for Battlefield 4. Um, from an esports point of view. Now, the reason why this kind of thing would be important is the same reason that uh, demos are requested when you play things like Counter Strike, when you play things like TF2, things of that nature, because this enables the admins to then take those recordings and review them and actually look to find out if there's any something suspicious. So, if for whatever reason somebody complains that another player seems to be doing something suspicious, they can look at the demo and make a judgment based on that. And that's the reason why it will be important as far as Battlefield th uh, 4 is concerned, Astro. Yes, I, I think there's an additional reason why battle recorder is desirable, and it's to allow the in the post-production end the ability to really capture and accentuate those battlefield moments. One of the really cool things about battlefield as an esport is that it has this combined arms element where you have uh, aircraft and uh, tanks and infantry all fighting each other. And it gets so exciting and so amazing that a lot of us who play competitively or at least cast competitive, uh, competitive matches tend to forget how incredible this sort of action is, this sandbox, larger-than-life experience. And a battle recorder allows us to recreate those kinds of moments for all to see. We, we have these sort of battlefield moments that get uh, captured online and put on YouTube, people that are running a, a PVR or running a uh, recording software, and it just th through happenstance do they end up recording something that's epic in nature and post it, and then everyone goes wild over it. The potential of having a demo recorder allows us to capture all those moments and record and, and recreate in the best quality we can those kind of moments and allow people to to connect with each other in terms of understanding and appreciating what uh, they're experiencing collectively. Now, yeah, I, I understand exactly what you're saying there because uh, one thing I found as a, as a caster, you probably found this, is that because there's so much going on in the battlefield, you can't get to every single point. You can't expect to see, and sometimes you miss what would be regarded as a huge play because you can't technically see anything, everything because you're focusing on one particular aspect of the battle at that particular point in time. Now, obviously, if you have the demo, then like you said, you can fly around, you can capture those moments, you can change them or well, not so much change them but make them very cinematic in terms of their presentation and um and use it as a way to sort of you know toot the horn of battlefield so to speak and so that that kind of aspect of it is is very helpful in giving i mean you just have to look at some of the um the stunt films that they did from battlefield too. some of the stunt stuff that they did there obviously they'll be using battle recorder and things of that nature and yes it enables them to create these amazing videos 
of the silliest stunts you could possibly imagine. And they became absolutely huge. I mean, these were so popular and it made a huge amount of uh, difference to the community and helped kind of grow the community through this kind of shared experience uh, as a result of enjoying the silliness that occurred in that particular, um, those particular films. Yes. And going back to the esports angle, though, it allows us to, to uh, better identify uh, instances in which there are questions of impropriety. It also allows us to, from a, uh, a coach perspective, to be able to review matches and, and understand really what happened in that deep, through a debrief of why a given team won or lost, what positionings were working and not working. Those other elements are, are very critical, and, and you can really do that through a, a very easy to implement demo recorder where you grab that demo and you play it and you can get any angle you want or you have the manually capture each of the various perspectives of your players be it through a spectator tool set which we will now have in Battlefield 4 luckily or having each of the player manually record their perspective and even then you're only capturing 50% of the perspectives because you're not going to easily be able to get your opponent's perspective but this is why battle recorder uh, it, it creates so much more flexibility and, and, and so much ease of access to this kind of information. Now, obviously, a lot of questions have been asked as a result of that as to why EA and DICE have decided not to implement this particular tool in Battlefield 4. Now, um, some of the things that I've uh, heard interviews, uh, Jack Frags did a good interview with Lars recently uh, that's up on his channel. If you guys haven't seen that, check out Jack Frags. And one thing he did say as a result of um, why this particular um, battle recorder has not been implemented is that they they kind of had a plan. They sort of had a roadmap as to what they wanted to achieve. And they were afraid if they were going to try and put too much into the game, that as a result, it would kind of dilute the effectiveness of what they've already decided to do um, and sort of take away from them the entire battlefield experience, which they obviously regard as very important. What's your thoughts on that? I, I, I think that is a very non-technical answer <laughs> to, at its core, in my opinion, a very technical question. And here's why. Now, in going back to Battlefield 2 with the battle record that was in place, my team, 20ID, made a, uh, a frag movie, a montage collection of highlights from every match that we had played over the course of three or four seasons of Battlefield. So every match that we had played, we'd save the demo, put it on a file server that we could all share, and then uh, at the end of that 18-month period, whatever it may be, we began to do the editing process. And we found in horror that every time that we wanted to load up a demo, we had to backtrack on which patch that given game was played on in order for us to be able to run that demo. We had to uninstall the game and, and then patch Battlefield 2, which you could incrementally patch through individual patch executables, to that given patch. Then we would load the demo, do the recordings that we want to do, and then we'd patch up to the next uh, uh, version of the game and do it again for that next batch of matches. And that's because demo recorders are not videos. They are simply collections of of information, metadata of all the players and their locations and the actions that they're taking uh, that uh, create all the action. But when you start changing the variables of the game, be it weapons damage or be it uh, how much health that a given vehicle or asset or even a, a flag burn takes, when the demo be tries to replay itself, it actually crashes. And this is a common issue that we see not just within Battlefield 2, but we saw it within uh, StarCraft. We saw it within the most recent Company of Heroes 2 game, which has a demo recorder, but the moment it patches, all your previous demos no longer mm -hmm. work. And one of the things that we have to remember in Battlefield 2 was that back in Battlefield 2, they were only patching the game every six months, maybe. And a lot of people say, well, okay, that's we'd like to see it patch better for, uh, for issues of balancing and things like that. Bad Company 2 was patched every nine months, approximately. So it actually got you know, worse in that respect. But when Battlefield 3 came out, due in part to the DLC unveilings and other things around those lines, we saw major updates to the game nearly every three months. And what they're saying in Battlefield 4 is that they're going to be patching the game in, in a much faster rate, anywhere mm -hmm. between one to two months. And that technical issue of, of, of 
of being able to reconcile the patches for the given demo, I think, is incredibly difficult from a technical perspective to to get around. And I'm not saying it's impossible, but I suspect that the amount of resources that would have been required for them to to create this environment that allows everyone to be able to play uh, would have been very difficult. And then I also think that more g generally their policy with with no land support, which is just to say in another way, not allowing individual players to have access to the server side executables mm -hmm. also means that they likely will never be able to do a uh, a uh, any kind of demo playback capability for individual players because at its core, a, a replay and a demo is creating a local server and then having that server read that metadata in that demo file and then recreating all the things that are happening. No different than you were if you were in a multiplayer game and the server was telling you that your your enemies that you were playing against were going to a certain point and you see them on your uh, on your mini map because that's what the server is telling you. It's the same concept. I, I suspect that that the licensing issues that they have. Uh, put in place and their emphasis on cloud because they don't want to give out those executables exacerbates this issue mm -hmm. of being able to give us a bad recorder now uh, one thing i did notice that well i i suppose that you could be said that i read into the um discussion or at least i noticed from the discussion that jack frags had with lars is he said he didn't want to put battle recorder into the game as it was being released but that doesn't necessarily rule out the possibility of it becoming a function later on with either a DLC or late, um, later on in the development process, depending on how Battlefield 4 sells. Now, obviously, there are a lot of people out there who will, obviously, will have the Doomsayer type attitude. Well, there's no battle recorder, so Battlefield 4 potential and um, as an eSport is essentially dead, which is not technically true because they've actually addressed that in many ways with the Observer mode, which is now coming back uh, into Battlefield 4. And from what we've seen from the live stream, it's a, a full functioning um, Observer mode that's going to make things a lot better from the point of view of casting and other aspects like that. But do you think that not having the battle recorder is actually going to affect the longevity of Battlefield 4 as an eSport? I, I think that it wouldn't hurt if we had it. I, I, I would prefer, but I, I think when we look at, uh, at popular console eSports games that don't have demo recorders in play uh, and their successes, I don't think that it's, an, it's a, one of those requirements that we have to have regardless or else we're not going to be successful. Uh, but I do want to go back to one of the points that you talked about, that in the future, a bad recorder could be within the cards. And this is some information that I don't talk about that much, and many people don't talk about that much because uh, it's, sort of, uh, it's, it's sort of going into the hacking the game sort of realm. But in Battlefield 3, levelbf.com uh, worked with some other modders and created their own version of spectator tools on their own it was basically just free cam and you watch my videos i use it a lot yeah but we weren't just we just we didn't just create free cam the only the other thing that we created in this was we created a web-based 2d mini map that was literally pulling metadata from the clients as they the data came in and then transposing all that information into into actual little figures like no like no kidding what commander mode looks like. Yeah. So we were doing it on a website, real time, using an HTML5. It was a, and it worked out just fine. But that wasn't the all, only the data that we were able to find. There were a bunch of things that we found within the code that were not necessarily functional, but they were present that indicated that they actually got pretty far into a spectator mode within Battlefield 3, and they also got pretty far into a battery quarter within Battlefield 3. There were dozens of commands in place that described uh, how many spectators were uh, were watching the, the, the game, uh, what the locations of the spectators were. Uh, there were different demo recording commands that were also in play. Now, none of these were functional because they were, but they were it embedded within the code that, were ne that was never cleaned up. And that led a lot of us to speculate of, well, what, what, how far did they really get to get into this before they were told to stop because of budget issues or because of resource issues? Mm -hmm. And and then further, is is this battle recorder code 
still in Battlefield 4. This is pure speculation, guys. Yeah, I don't know. There's no evidence to back this up for Battlefield 4. <laughs> but uh, it, it's almost like they 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 were trying. But, but then something went awry, and perhaps we'll never know for years to come what's what was the reason for it. I personally suspect that in Battlefield 3, it had a lot more to do with the fact that, that current generation consoles probably couldn't handle it. Yeah. Be, that's my guess. And that's always a constraint, guys, when you talk about a, a multi-platform game. But it does beg the question of really how far they got into it. And if it's in the cards in the future, I most certainly hope it is. And I, I think it would, it would only help Battlefield Esports in the future. Uh, but we're just going to have to see. Yeah, I mean, one thing um, that it would definitely help with, because uh, if leagues are going to be watching certain things, then you're going to have to have an observer on there just as an admin who will be trying to yeah. watch everything, um, which obviously will be circumvented by having the battle recorder because you just have the recording. So if anything, yes. uh, there's going to be more work required by league and competition admins in order to ensure that there is no cheating. And obviously, you know, with the change that they did in Battlefield 3 to move over to client-side hit detection and things of that nature, it means that it could make things a little bit not so much. It could increase some of the leagues and uh, competitions overheads when it comes to having to employ more admins to ensure that people don't uh, buck the system, so to speak. I I agree with that. The client side hit detection in Battlefield 3 has always been a contentious issue, especially when you have large ping disparities. In North America, we have a a running joke about South American teams, which is when they when they're not when they're playing against better North American players, they'll always switch to 870 slugs because they know that with the ping disparity, 870 slugs can be one hit kills. And due to how the client side detection operates, it gives them an advantage. Now I'm not hating on the South American team <laughs> by saying that that's just one of the things that is kind of a funny uh, aspect about North America and South American battlefield esports. but it, it's client side detection is a big deal. And, um, and, uh, I'd love to see server side hit detection, to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I'd love to see that before battle recorder, not to, uh, you know, not to derail this conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. But, but I, I think that battle recorder provides a very, a very good role in this, and I think it's hard for me to uh, expect the le leagues and other ladders, unless you're talking about the, the most well-staffed ones out there, mm -hmm. to have literally a referee. Uh, on uh, in the map playing in a match at any given time and even then that referee is not going to catch everything exactly. because if there's even if it's a 5v5 which is probably the, the, the smallest game mode will we'll end up seeing in battlefield uh, and and I think that personally a larger game uh, mode and team size that accommodates vehicles is a better idea but regardless of which of what format and team size you're doing watching even 10 guys total is is difficult and I, and I say this as someone who does a lot of multi-POV commentaries where I'm looking at, no kidding, nine or ten different perspectives simultaneously. <laughs> yeah. It's hard. It really is. And um, and you don't know exactly what, unless you have a very good eye for it, it's gonna, it's very difficult. And I, so I have reservations about the, the, the efficacy of spectator tools in terms of anti-cheat, um, unless you have four referees on who can yeah. watch, you know, two or three people apiece. But that... That manpower intensity is reserved only for the, the the biggest leagues out there that can push that manpower on them. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's that's. I mean, that's the likes of you know the ESL in Europe and uh, MLG and all that kind of yes. stuff. These these are the these are the leagues that have the financial backing to allow allow them to do that. But I mean, I I have to say I am I am very much looking forward to Battlefield Four. I think it's going to be a improvement there are some aspects of it that um you know i'd like to see the, uh, the some of the options for servers to be able to switch certain, certain aspects off for the yes. professional players so that they don't have to so if need be they can switch off levolution because they don't need it or they can switch off the weather effects because it, um, it'll just get in the way things of that nature but i have to say that i am i think it's going to be an improvement on the previous version um, to the point where um, it will just definitely, I think, start to take off as far as an esports concerned. It's got the potential to do it. I think. Yes, as I think, as long as people um, find it to be a fun, entertaining, engaging, replayable game, uh, both in the in the casual play but also in the competitive play, 
uh, we will have the at least the bare minimum set of tools needed to facilitate a, uh, a successful uh, uh, growth strategy for Battlefield Esports with the spectator tools and the server configurations uh, and so on and so forth. But Battle Recorder would be a, a tremendous addition to this. A because, cherry on the cake. Because I, I firmly believe that if, if, if a casual player, be it Battlefield or otherwise, were, were to experience the kind of action that we see in competitive Battlefield, especially when there's vehicles involved, if you could get them a battery recorder and just have them be a, a ghost or a, you know a fly on the wall, so to speak, they'll find it, it to be quite incredible. It's not it uh, it's quite a contrast compared to other competitive FPS titles because uh, unlike many which are round based endeavors, Battlefield is constant. It keeps on going, mm -hmm. and there's just a, a variety of action always there. Almost too much compared to a game that like Call of Duty or Counter Strike in which you have a round and then everyone dies and then you start over it's very different for battlefield and that's in that respect i i believe that people will will uh, enjoy it if they have the opportunity to even watch it and i, I think that's what's so core here is that battle core is another way to experience it uh and uh and it, spectator tools does it as well but I, i'm all about giving people as many options as they can to experience the battle Absolutely. I completely agree. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time to have this discussion with us, Daskra. I really appreciate you uh, coming here and uh, joining us. Um, is there any uh, things, any shout outs, anything you'd like to say before we come to a close? Yes. Uh, so, Chen, I want to thank you for having me. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, many of these uh, top Battlefield European teams like Absalon to compete within Battlefield 4. We're excited about that. I know I'll be covering uh, this, and I, and I hope that you do, too, as well, Chad. Yeah. And I, especially uh, doing some commentaries together. I, I, I'd very much uh, like that. Definitely, without a doubt. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I do, I do enjoy it. It, 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 kind of, it kind of broke my heart a little bit not being able to shoutcast Battlefield 3 because of the sheer intensity. I still enjoy playing it even now, even yeah, this many years so later. I mean, and, and take in mind, before I had free cam, the only way that I was able to do shoutcast was I literally had to ask the players just to give me their raw footage, and then I had to edit it and things like that, just so I get it to a state in which I could begin to do commentary over it. So, I, it's been such a, it's it's been so overwhelming in terms of the barriers to entry. For Battlefield 3, do anything even as easy, relatively easy as shoutcasting, which a lot of us take for granted when we think of Counter Strike or uh, or Call of Duty. But in in this, it's been very difficult. So I'm I'm looking forward to Battlefield 4 for these reasons and then some. Indeed. Now, um, if people want to check out your channel and subscribe to your YouTube content, where can they find you? Yes, you can find me on youtube.com forward slash Daskro. It's D-A-S-K-R-O. In fact, you can find me on all the various social media sites. Uh, I'm, on, I'm on Twitter at Daskro. I'm on Facebook at Daskro. I'm on twitch.tv, Daskro. You can find me all there, and uh, I, I look forward to all you checking out my content. Uh, I think you'll enjoy it if you like esports. Definitely, definitely. Thank you very much, Daskro. appreciate you taking the time. And thanks for listening, everyone, and we'll see you again soon. Take care.